Hello, my name is Robert Waltz, and for the last two decades or so, I have been the editor of the Traditional Ballad Index, one of the online bibliographies and references for folk songs. Here you can see our current web address and the web address we hope to have up and running soon. The Ballad Index is a project I acquired almost by accident. When I asked about an online bibliography on the Ballad L mailing list, no one spoke up, so I found myself the editor essentially by default. But I'm glad I took it on. I've learned a lot about folk music and many other things as a result. There will be seven videos in this series, but you won't need to watch them all. This one is the broad overview, so this is where we get started. I should tell you that the Ballad Index is not all my work. From the start, anyone with an interest and knowledge is welcome to contribute. I estimate that about three-fifths of the content is mine but Ben Schwartz is responsible for a third or so, and Paul Stamler did most of our 78s and a lot of recordings and several books. Others have contributed also. I'd like to try to give you an overview of the index with some history to explain why it is what it is. Just a warning, I live near a railroad track, and there are a lot of trains, and there is no one at the controls of this recording but me, and I've already done this six times and it hasn't worked yet. <laughs> so if you hear some train noise in the background, consider it a folkloric touch. When the internet, when the index started, the internet was well established, but the World Wide Web was still fairly new and people were still connecting via modem. There was no freely available catalog of folk songs at that time, just some print catalogs like Dean Smith's, that were both limited and out of date. But files had to still be relatively small. Back then, the, the thought was to create a collection of short citations that could be downloaded easily and searched with a word processor. We call it a ballad index because it was a nice shorthand and because it was conceived on the Ballad L mailing list. But it was always intended to be a catalog of traditional folk songs, not restricted to ballads. Before I began, I surveyed the people on the Ballad L list to determine which features were most important and least important for ballad scholars to know what we needed to squeeze into an index that still might end up being stored on a floppy disk. Although we've added a lot of features since then, the format of the index still shows some influence from that initial survey, particularly in terms of the data we summarize rather than offering in full. You can see some fairly typical early entries that have just a few text fields about each song. And that's what it ba the index basically is. It's a, a text file. So they started with the name of the song, the description, the author if we knew it, when it was collected, some keywords, and the, the references that were the whole point, more or less. On the question of what is a folk song, we've used a somewhat sloppy definition. In a way, we're just indexing anything anyone says is a folk song. If a scholar included it in a folk song collection, in it goes. Beyond that, it's a matter of feeling. If a collection includes a lot of traditional songs, and we do want traditional songs, if the collection includes a lot of traditional songs, but also many non-traditional pieces, we'll index only the tr traditional ones. The goal of all this is to capture all the folk songs of the English-speaking world, even if some of them are not in English. We have mostly English songs, but there are a fair number of French songs and some in other languages as well. At this point, we're close to comprehensive, at least for English language songs, for New Zealand and Newfoundland, and have most of the major collections from Britain, the United States, Ireland, Australia, and Canada, although there is still a lot of work to do. Frankly, this project is never going to end. Cataloging folk songs has some relationship to, say, cataloging books. When you think of a book, you think of a, a sort of a vague entity. What is Hamlet? There is Hamlet, the idea, and then there are all the editions of Hamlet, from early quartos to modern pocket editions to literature anthologies. Folk songs, if you think about it, are the same way. There are a bunch of individual field collections, and printings, broadsides, whatever, which are all individual instances of a nebulous entity that which we consider to be one song. This means that there are two basic ways to catalog folk songs. One might be called the top-down model. You have the basic entity that you deal with is the whole folk song. 
we have entries for that whole folk song with bibliographic entries for individual instances filed under that. In the other model, the bottom-up model, you start with the individual instances and move up to the main entry to look for related songs. In a top-down model, you would look up, say, as the song we have here, The Jam on Jerry's Rocks, and then look under it to find a version transcribed by Franz Rickaby, or as sung by A.C. Hanna, or found in Brown's collection, or whatever. In the bottom-up model, you look at the versions first. You will start with Rickaby's version of the song called Jerry's Rocks, not the jam on Jerry's Rocks, or you'll start out with Brown's version or whatever it is. And from there you'll move up to the whole thing. The route index, which I know many of you know, is a bottom-up index. The traditional ballad index is a top-down index. We catalog our material based on the song, not the individual instances. So that means that in the index you look up the jam on Jerry's rock, not the version on page 11 of Rickaby that was sung by A.C. Hanna. Of course, if you're going to start with the song, if you're going to start up here, you have to have some way to identify that song, to know what is the jam on Jerry's rocks. Most folk song scholars will be instantly able to identify a particular collection if it's a widespread song such as Barbara Allen. Although you might not know the particular title we file under. We file Barbara Allen under Barbara Allen, not under Bonnie Barbara Allen, as Child did. Still, you would know Barbara Allen. But if I mentioned, say, the Newfoundland song, Captains and Ships, would you know what song I mean? And if you did know what song I meant, would you be able to identify a copy of it? What this means is that a top-down index has to have a set of finding tools. You have to know if a particular version belongs to the particular song, and you have to know when to lump and when to split. At the Ballad Index, we tend to be splitters. Our basic identification tool is the song title. That is, this song is the jam on Jerry's Rocks. It's not number 433 or XQZ. The name is how we identify it, the, the standard name for that song. Our, so that's our basic identification tool, but we also have a description of the song to let you be sure you have identified it right, and we have a set of keywords to make it fa faster to find things. If you knew the jam on Jerry's Rocks as you knew it as Johnson's Rock and the hero was young Donald instead of young Monroe, you could still, have a f you could still find it and a few related songs just by looking for the keywords. You could look up a lumbering song about death and drowning, and that would give you the jam on Jerry's Rocks and a few others. And then you could sort through for the one that fits most precisely. So those are our finding tools. Other information in the entry supplies a broad overview of the song's history, things you could glean from a detailed look at the instances of the songs, but which we can give you more quickly. So we have an earliest date at which we can verify the existence of the song. That's this earliest date. And we have a summary of the places where the song has been collected based on nations and geographic regions. So we don't list everywhere that the song has been found, but we say it's been found in the United States in these regions. It's been found in Scotland. It's been found in various parts of Canada. Plus, of course, the bibliographic data, summary of the books and broadsides and recordings where the source has been found. For this one, believe me, there are a lot more below this one if we had it all on the screen. Frankly, though, if... This were all that the ballot index did. I'd have to say the top-down organization isn't worth it. You should all use the route index because it has more information about individual instances of the song. If you want song instances, the route index is your index. But a song-based model, a top-down model, can do other things. Particularly since the ballot index is relatively free form, although there are some things that we include in every en entry, name, of course, and description, and the keywords and such. The rest can almost become an essay on a particular song. And a particular song instance can even be listed under two different songs. If we're not sure which song it is because it's so short, we can list it in two places. Or if it combines two songs, which does happen, we can list it under both of them. 
to show you what I mean about this organization, I'd like to take a few examples. We can start with the very first song you would see if you use our Ballad Index software. So just a moment while I shift to the Ballad Index software. This is where you would start in the software. And when we go into it, it shows you the entry for Laws A1 Brave Wolf. At the top of this form, you'll see the name of the song. And then we get into the, the, the full detailed entry, the name, the description. There's the author field, although in this case we don't know. We have, the again, the earliest date. In this case, it's right after the event that's described. We have the keywords. We have, the again, the summary of where the song has been found. This is one that's been found in a lot of the eastern U.S. and in eastern Canada and in southern England. We also have the bibliographic references in there. You can see that this one has quite a few, and it has, there's a recording, a broadside. But note in addition to that, in addition to that bibliographic detail, we have the historical references, we have the cross references, we have the same tune field, and we have the notes that just barely fit, but there are the notes on, go on down. The historical references and the notes give you useful facts about the events which underlie this ballad. The cross-references give you access to other songs which are about the same event or which were inspirations for this song. For example, this one, The Brave Wolf, is often sung to the tune. It's also used for the blacksmith, so there's a reference there. There's another song about General Wolf. There's a song allegedly by Wolf. And the same tune field in this case, it kind of overlaps. It tells you that the blacksmith uses the same tune. There aren't many same tunes on this one, but if it's if you're looking at a song like Roz and the Bow, there can be dozens of things under there. So let's take another song, one that I already mentioned, Captains and Ships. We'll use what we call a quick find to locate it. This looks for, the quick find looks for the three most important things for identifying the song. You can try the title, you can try the description, you can use the song keywords. So we'll put in captains and ships. You don't actually have to spell this out, but I'll do it to make it clear what I'm doing. And that finds us two things, one of which is captains and ships. The other one is actually an alternate title for captains and ships, but we'll look at this, which, which is the main entry. This starts with most of the same information as Brave Wolf. It has the title, it has the description, it has the author, and the earliest date and such. This basic information in this case is pretty short. But look down at the notes. The notes are almost the whole entry. Down at the bottom you'll even see there's a bibliography for the notes. These are books that I use to compile the notes, and they're also important books for understanding the song. So when you look at this, this isn't just a bibliographic entry. It's not just a list of citations. For this relatively obscure song, known from only one informant, Jim Rice, I actually sat down and traced every single mention of a captain or a ship which is mentioned in the song and identified what that, that mention refers to. I also listed every other song which refers to that particular ship because this is a song about an actual event and they're all real ships. So if you come down here, second ship down is the Bell. It's called the Bell in the song. And what I give is her correct name, the Bell Venture, her captain, Job Nee, and tell you about another song that mentions this ship and give you and so this this gives you a whole bunch of instance of information about all the material in this song. And by doing that, I was actually able to determine the date of the song. It describes the Newfoundland seal hunt of 1910. So the Ballad Index isn't just a bibliography. This entry is a ballad essay. Or take the subject of the earliest English ballad, a much-discussed topic in some circles. Child proposed Judas as the earliest surviving instance of a ballad, but many others have their pet suggestions. If you go to the entry for Judas, there are actually several songs with Judas in the title, but we'll go to the one the child is talking about. You'll find down here in the cross-references, references for six other poems and songs that people have suggested for the role of the earliest English ballad. You can then go to, say, Edward the Martyr, 
to see the case that whoever it was made for it. And you, you'll get the information, you'll get historical background. Again, you'll get a bibliography of some of the song or some of the books that contribute to this argument. Of course, not every song in the Ballad Index has that much detail associated with it. Back when this project started, having a database that large was out of the question. We've got 25 megabytes of data now. You couldn't download that much back then. So most of the songs that were entered early in the project, such as the Child and Laws ballads, don't have such extensive notes. But again, we have a flexible format that lets us be, include whatever we can, and, or wherever we want to, and we include everything we can. As of this writing, of the more than 10,000 songs in the index, there are more than 600 songs with at least 500 words of notes. My goal is to make the index not just a collection of song references, but a starting point for historical and critical research on the history and content of the songs. In some places, such as Captains and Ships, I hope I've made it the ending point, too. There really isn't much more you can say about that song. We'll never have as many references in the Ballad Index as there are in the Route Index. The two serve significantly different purposes. Frankly, they complement each other. And in fact, at this point, we designed the two to complement each other. So this isn't the best thing for references, but I hope the Ballad Index can be your one-stop shop for material about the songs. I'll talk more about the, in more detail about the information in the index in my next segment.